I brought back the cow class. I gave it a name and an age. Obviously, this is not a very, very dynamic class because I hard coded the name and I hard coded the age. But I'm just contriving this example up just to show you yet another attribute that might may or may not make your life easy. Let me make a static void i cow for butchering function, and I'm going to take the name and I'll take the age. Like so, and I probably should just pass the whole cow here, but again, I'm just making this up. So, console write line name plus the space plus the age, and then I'm going to var cow gets new cow, and let's eye the cow for butchering. Sorry for those of you that think it's cruel to butcher cows. Um, I probably should have rated this PG or something like that. Okay, var cow, new cow, i cow for butchering, that sort of thing. Now I'm going to hit F10, F10, F10. Now I want to hit F11 and step into the i cow for butchering method. And before Visual Studio got smart, when I would hit F11, instead what it would do is step into this property, and then it would step into this property, and then it would step into here. But what I want to do is step over these properties and just step into here. Watch, I'm going to hit F11. Pop! I come up here, not in here. I don't care about this. I just want to skip that and get into here. All right, this can be frustrating. F11, F11, F11. And now I'm like, oh, oh okay, I'll hit F11 so I can step into this. F11, nope, denied. We're up here at the age property. Oh, what a headache. Return 5, and now we're back, and I can say, okay, F11, finally, I'm in the method I'm interested in debugging. Okay, well, I, I don't know exactly when they did this, but I can click on Tools, Options, Debugging, General, and I can say, step over properties and operators right here. Check, click OK, and now watch. F11, F11, F11. Now, when I hit F11, it's not going to go through all these properties. It's going to just step over them, and let's get down to what I'm really interested in here. I have Bessie and I have age. Okay, but say say there was a bug in my age code. Obviously there's how much bug how many bugs could be in this simple line. But say say I had a lot of code in here and there was a bug in it. And so I wanted to debug this, but not necessarily this. Okay, well I could come up here and say uh, tools, options, let's not step over those things. Click OK. And then what I can do is come up here and add an attribute to this, say debugger, step through, control dot, using system.diagnostics. I've tagged this property with debugger step through, meaning debugger. Don't ever let me F11 into it. Skip it. Now, I'm not putting the attribute on this property, so it'll allow me to step into this one, but not this, not the top name one. So watch, F11. Oh, I'm stupid. I can't put it on properties. I have to put it on the actual methods down here. So I'll put it right there on the on the getter for the for the uh, for the property. Control Shift B. Build succeeded. Now F11, F11, F11. Now when I hit F11 on this, we're going to skip this one, but we'll step into the age one just like I wanted. So look at me customizing my debugging. That is awesome. Right, now let me show you a few other things with this debugger step through. Control A, static void main, tab, tab. Uh, on that note, actually, when you use static void main, you probably just get static void main. I changed my code snippet, so when I hit tab, it throws in the class and the using. Let me just show you real quick how to do that. Control KB uh, brings up the path to all your code snippets. I want to find Visual C Sharp going to find SVM for static void main. You can modify any of these if you want. Here's the file name to it. Control C, cancel, control O, paste the file name in there, hit open, and here is the XML that makes up that code snippet. And I just went and added this stuff in there. Okay, so that's, anyway, a little FYI. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's keep going with the debugger step through. I'm going to make a void first method. And I'm going to make a void second. Oh, let's just copy and paste. Copy, paste, paste, paste. This one's first up here at the top. This one will be second. This one will be third. And on second method, I'm going to say debugger. Debugger, step through. Like so. Oops, step through. Step through, control dot, enter. And then first method is going to call second method. Second method is going to call third method. 
like so. And then in main, we will call first method. And I just realized I didn't put static on all these. Static, control C, control V, control V. Okay, I think we're good. Control Shift B, it builds. Now watch, F10. I like to go up here, debug windows. I'll use the call stack when I need to. Go watch my uh, C sharp stack. Uh, I believe it's in the types playlist. I have some some uh, methods that, or uh, videos at the end of the C sharp types that deals with the stack. Anyway, this is the call stack. I'm going to hit F11 so I can step into these methods. So right now we have main. We're in main. F11 is the first method. You see, first method is now on the stack. F11 is the second method. But what it's going to do is step through second method and just jump straight to third. So watch. F11. We're jumped all the way here, and then it's interesting. The call stack. We get this external code. We won't show it to you. You don't know about it. It's just there. Nobody talks about it. That kind of thing. So external code, and this could be as deep as we wanted it to be. But we even get that here. It's like external code. The .NET framework just called main, but we won't tell you who it was or how we got here. Just don't ask. You get the idea. Anyway, external code, and then when I return from this, we jump all the way up to here. So, yes, second method did execute. I could prove it to you. Well, the way I proved it to you is we got into third method somehow, but we can come up here and say, uh, second method from the past. Like that. F11, 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 F11. And you see, when we step down to third method, this code, or this output showed up. I don't know why I'm singing to you. Okay, let's step through. Now watch what happens. I'm going to say debugger hidden instead. So this is like even worse. Watch. F11. F11. It's hidden to the debugger. F11, F11. I'm going to F11 on this. We'll, again, we'll jump straight down to here. We do get the output the same, but then what's the difference with debugger hidden? Well, look at the call stack. We went straight from first method to third method. There's no external code sitting between these two like there was before. Ooh, that sounds pretty secretive. I don't know why I'm having so much fun talking secretively. Okay, that's uh, some debugger attributes for you.